difference between network and community because I think both are important and I wanted to get a bit of a sense of what you need most right now so network what what is that our official amazing if definition of a network is is all about people helping people so this is people that you are connected to that you help and support in their career with their development and likewise there are some people that you are connected to that you get help from and support you in, in your career so it's a, it's a collection of connections that are, are kind of um the currency of that particular connection is help like how can I help you you know do you do you need some uh, do I need some help from you that kind of thing so the currency of the network and that is all around help so it's more about people um that know you um and community slightly different like the word that that resonated with me was the glue. So if you imagine this network is like people that know you uh, and the currency that's going on there is, is help. Community is slightly different. It's, it's, it talks about the social glue that bonds us together. So it is, it's bigger, it's bigger than Helen Tupper. Like a network is really, Helen Tupper is at the center of my career network. It's people that know me that I can help and that, um, and, and that they will help me. A community is not Helen Tupper at the centre. We are bonded by something bigger than any one person. So, for example, the Squiggly Careers community is not about Helen Tupper and Sarah Ellis. It is about Squiggly Careers. It is bigger than us. And we are bonded by wanting to belong to that. But there's a social glue that is keeping this community together because we be, believe in something bigger than any one person. And that is that is what community is about. It is about bonds, belonging and social glue. Now, both of these are important. Your network that you build around your career is definitely going to help you go further and faster in your career. Like getting help from other people will lead to new roles, new opportunities, you know, lots of different growth community will help you to find a sense of belonging it will often connect you to purpose and meaning and that is important for us and our motivation at work so both both of these things are important and valuable and um, what I wanted to get a bit of a sense of is what you think you need most right now so do you feel like I need a network I need people helping people I need people to help me go further and faster that's what I need most right now or do you need a community? Do you want to be part of something that feels bigger than you, that has a purpose that brings people together, that has a sense of social glue? And um, what we're going to do is a bit of voting. So Mihan and, and everyone who is uh, here for the first time, the way this works is if you go towards the top of your screen, you're going to find uh, view options. Look at the stars there already. View options and then annotate stamp and star and you're going to stick a star for me on either network or community what do you need most right now uh, so I'll repeat how you do that so top of your screen you should see view options on the zoom screen and then it's annotate and then it's stamp and then it's star and you can just stick the star on either network or community if anyone's like where are these stars do not worry just stick it uh, or you can do an arrow <laughs> you can do an arrow if you want to uh, just stick your response into chat and um, I will kind of add you add you a manual star um oh so we're pretty oh, we're pretty even what do, what do you reckon maybe what do you reckon maybe networks pipping pipping the post a little bit pretty pretty even though um I think what I need most right now is probably network I like I, I mean I love I love both uh but in terms of where I I uh, personally kind of I've got a lot to learn in terms of the work that we're doing at West Quickly is growing and I think I need some help to do that so actually me investing in my network will help me go further and faster at the moment but there are times there are definite times when I feel like I need more of a, a community around me and um, would well, you know when I particularly needed community was when I was leaving uh, corporate like so my last role at Microsoft and when I was moving into doing amazing if full time that was a really big period transition for me. And it was quite isolating because suddenly I was doing something that not a lot of people were doing. Most people I knew were in these corporate careers and suddenly I was leaving it and setting myself up. And so I remember at the time, I really connected with a community called um, Hoxby, um, which is a really great community of freelancers who are all bonded by um, kind of setting up a different way of working basically sort of liberating liberating work and I connected with the founders Alex and Lizzie and the, the Hoxby community more generally and it gave it gave me a place to be <laughs> when I felt like I'd lost the place that I was in and so for me personally my reflections are 
community has an amazing value during points of career transition. Any, any point in time when you might feel like you're going through quite a big change or, or maybe for some reason you're feeling a bit isolated. So literally, you know, becoming a parent for the first time, leaving my corporate career, uh, setting up a, 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 a kind of a, a side project and a, a side business. Those big points of career transition for me have been when my need for community has peaked. And um, just out of interest, people that are have been part of communities, what has been the sort of trigger for you? Is it the same as me? Has it been a career transition? That's when you felt like you needed it. Or has it been something else? What has been the trigger for you to get involved in, in a community or to feel that that was a need for you that was important? DNI movement. So is that like a passion, Kate, would you say? Like a sort of like a, a point of view or a passion that was becoming increasingly important to you? I'm um, trying to think if that might be the, the trigger for, for you with that one. Uh, Laura, so relocating back to Yorkshire again. So going through that period of transition, feeling like that you kind of need that in that community around you. Um, yeah, want to help triggered by BLM. Yeah, so kind of feeling like there's this kind of passion, there's this need within you to want to do, to want to want to help and to be part of community. Yeah, me and being a woman in tech. Yeah, absolutely. I, I recognise that as well. I think so. That's not a transition, is it? That's sort of like. Um, it's, it's wanting to be supported by other people who are experiencing the same things as you. Um, giving back, Amri, that's a really nice, so you've, this desire to give back and finding a community to give back with. Uh, yeah, Anna setting things up, Amal, new hobby, new life stages. Ah, oh, threading important things into my life. I love that. So I think, um, I guess my, my, my point here is that these things do take time. Now, if you want to lead a community, it's going to take you time. If you want to learn in a community, it's going to take commitment. And so I think understanding a little bit about what's your trigger is, is a useful is a useful kind of uh, a useful insight. So for me now, I know every time I go through a period of career transition, it is a useful trigger for me to look to a community that I can learn, like I learn, I can learn with basically. Um, OK, let's talk about a few other things then. Um, I want to talk about the difference between a, a, a leader and a learner and why I think both are really important in the sense of community. So there are definitely some communities that I am more of a leader in. So uh, all things squiggly, like because Sarah and I kind of curate and pull together those communities. So that, that picture there, for example, is our, it was the graduation of our squiggly career advocates community yesterday. It's a community we set up last year off the back of the, um, of the TED talk that we did. Uh, and so that's a community that we've created. We kind of led the agenda. We have led like, we you know what people are talking about and coming together. So that's kind of our role in that community. But then there are lots of communities that I'm much more of a learner in um, and so for example this is a community that I'm very active in now uh, it's called Cabal it's a brilliant community because it comes with food and wine you get to learn with food and wine and brilliant people I absolutely love it it happens every single month and um, there are lots of people that I don't know and I I'm very I'm in like total learner mode I'm like squeezing out everything that everyone else brings and I absolutely love it um, and so for me being a leader gives me that sense of bringing people together but being a learner helps me to see how other people make communities like I learn actually quite a lot the cabal community is amazing it it happens every month it happens on the same day every month it mixes in person and there's an amazing whatsapp group so being part of it I not only learn some stuff about what people say I also learn how to build a better community so I think being both a leader should you wish to but also a learner in a community helps you do both better. And um, it looks like Drew Povey. It is Drew Povey. And actually, that's so this, this guy right at the end of the table there. Lovely Drew. Uh, Drew uh, was uh, on a programme called Educating Manchester. And he was on, he came to our uh, launch event uh, in, in, in Manchester when we did You Coach You. He's brilliant, really, really good. So he's on the, he's on the podcast if you want to hear his words, words of wisdom. Uh, and he has a new, uh, a new book out as well. Anyway, my question for you was, are you a leader and are you a learner? So I'm just going to I'm going to just move the stars away. You might have two stars. You might say I lead a community and I learn from a community. Arguably, you're all learners in communities because you're all here. So you should probably all put a star on that one. But I wanted to see how many people are both. How many people are currently leading a community as well as learning within one? Um, and if you are leading a community now, I would love you to share like what that community is in chat so we can kind of see the 
range of different communities that we we are all leading uh, so if you are if there are stars on the left of the screen if you're like yes i'm a leader of a community um do pop into chat what that is um so the Wakato women in business female entrepreneur group action for happiness joanne and and the women's work network um i lead an action for happiness group ah uh, first time home buyer sessions and community susie Honestly, I don't think every group that I talk to would have as many leaders as there are currently in this group. I that there is something like just recognize this that there is something about this group of people that there are that many community leaders within within this group. I think that is actually a really really big thing. Um, that means you are creating a space that is helping other people learn. Um, which is which is amazing, and that you know, lot, lots of people don't do that, which is also fine. But as being part of this Pod Plus community, you obviously do. We don't see that many stars when we ask that question. Other groups, so pretty, it's pretty cool. Kiwi Coaches in the UK, uh, Learning Hub at Work, Enterprise Security Architecture, amazing leader of the PA community and the committee. Brilliant. Ah, Coley's HR group. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love all the things that you're doing. And um, so, yeah, I think the more that you can be both, the better it will be. But obviously, sometimes it's, it's fine just to be a learner, too. Like not everybody needs to leave. But I think there is obviously a lot of a lot of community leaders in, in this group, which is which is brilliant. Community of Borough Brilliance, the learning group at work. Ah, oh, Borough Brilliance. Um, OK, so what I wanted to do now was get give you an opportunity to learn from each other a little bit and just you know talk a bit more broadly about about community. Uh, HR Ninja Group. Um, so we're going to just go into a breakout room uh, for, I'm just going to do it for eight minutes. That is a very short, specific time. <laughs> we're just going to go in for eight minutes. Um, and what I wanted to do in the groups, I'll put you in a group of three people. So have a quick like, hi, I'm Helen. Uh, have a quick intro. And then um, wouldn't it be amazing if, which is what WIBA uh, is, I uh, want you to talk about, and these are the questions that are actually on the pod sheet this week. I thought we'd sort of borrow a little bit from the pod sheet. Um, so the first is um, three words to describe your ideal community. So I might say, my, the ideal community that I would want to be part of would be um uh social because I quite like social uh it would be different so there'd be loads of people that I've not met before so there'd be a lot of like difference in that group social different and uh like uh, this is there'd be this is really there'd be a lot of like action <laughs> like they basically there'd be some discussion but there'd be like stuff that we could do like I feel like the community was taking action rather than just having a social a social chat they'd be my words anyway you you can have your own words um, and then if you were suddenly going to set up a community like in the next couple of months what would like if you could create any community what would that community be and why would it exist now you could do both of those questions if you've got time for them or you could just pick one you could pick you could pick the what and the why or you could pick your three words do whatever do whatever feels comfortable for you um but then we'll just come back together for a few kind of final final insights on all things community and um, so i'm going to open the breakout groups now to add a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a a chat about the different communities that you're interested in maybe you might be inspired to start that one that you were you were talking about um there's lots of tips so so while we're just waiting for everyone else to come back, there are lots of tips on the podcast. If you haven't listened to the podcast this week, there are loads of tips on starting that community. So whatever that one is that you were like, I'm inspired to start this community. Um, and this is why, this is why I want it to exist. There are lots of practical tips on how to get started on the podcast this week. Um, I'm just going to wait for everybody else to return. Really, really don't want to come back for the groups. There we go. Everyone's back now. Hello, everybody. Um, okay. You're all back. Brilliant. OK, I'm assuming that because you waited till the last second for the breakout room to close, that they were useful discussions that could have gone on, that could have gone on much further. And um, so I was just saying that the, particularly the people that had that last conversation about um, this is a community that I would love to exist and this is why I wanted to exist. There are lots of tips within the podcast this week or just the pod sheet that you could look at that will, will help you to get started. So um, they're summarised here on the pod sheet. You can see like. Uh, seven tips here to build the career community that's what Pritesh and I talk through um, on the podcast and Pritesh's day job is to build communities so he's got a lot of expertise in that area and um, the last thing I wanted to do and I thought I would just get this up is communities that you can go and join I will share this super quickly maybe let's get into into chat any other communities that you're like join this community it is amazing these are some that I am part of that I recommend that I have learned 
with and learned from. Uh, there is Tortoise, really great community if you're into kind of current affairs and like a debate. They kind of sometimes a little bit spiky in terms of the topics that they cover. They have lots of virtual discussions. Marketing Academy is a community that I have been part of as a scholar, which is a closed community, but also they have lots of open community events as well. Highly, highly recommend that. Idler, great one if you just like to learn about some random stuff. They have authors, uh, they have lots of um, just like general curiosity in its broadest sense. I love the Idler, uh, Idler Academy, and uh, you can find out loads of stuff from them there. Uh, Yellow is a, a paid for community, so it's closed in that sense, but it is a, a brilliant community all about learning, uh, learning in very, very different ways, um, founded by someone called um, Robert Poynton. Um, and another person called Alex as well, great community to be part of. How to Academy. So they have communities around the events that they run. So um, you can often pick topics that are specifically of interest to you and, and they have kind of little learning communities around them. Um, and then Marketing Meetup, which is the one that uh, we talk about on the podcast as an example, actually, run by Joe Glover, free to be part of, like lots and lots of events. It's about to launch a new series of events and a great, uh, very squiggly career-esque in terms of the community vibe there. Lots of like-minded learners. Um, so maybe screenshot this page so that you, you that you've got it uh, and you know put all of your other ideas into into chat um so we've got like wackle futures and bloom yeah familiar with both of those um steve's put some links there to the linkedin group um but yeah hopefully that is helpful sorry to rush off everybody but i need to go and deliver a session on the five skills to succeed in squiggly careers but thank you very much for being here today i hope you found the conversation useful hope you can be both a leader and a learner in a community because it's ways that we can all grow and help other people too as well see you all again next week oh the last thing i had for you is this upcoming podcast upcoming podcast assertiveness management and how to spend and save for your learning fund which we're doing around learning at work week in may uh, but that's what's coming up everybody see you all soon take care bye everyone take care